Well, hello there and welcome to this very new video series we're calling Meet the Parishioners. Da -da -da -da. See, I'm learning. We got this, uh, all this new stuff for uh, doing our live stream masses, so I figured why not use it? Um, and so this uh, thing, Meet the Parishioners, uh, uh, the video segment, I don't know what, we're, what we're going to call this yet, series. Um, anyway, it's a way for us to continue to build community and keep uh, our relationship strong here at St. Ed's, uh, even virtually, and uh, hopefully each week we'll interview uh, different parishioners and just kind of check in, see how they're doing, introduce them to the wider community, and go from there. For those who don't know me or might be new to St. Ed's or to our uh, social media, my name is Father Dominic Clementi. I'm the pastor here at St. Edward. I, I've been assigned here for four years. Um, I started as the associate and became the pastor this past July, and what a fun first year it's been as pastor. Um, but enough about me. We're going to uh, introduce our first guest, um, Stace Weislogel, who's been a uh, member of the parish for a long time. He has two kids who went to our school, and I'll uh, let Stace introduce himself. So, uh, all right, we got you, Stace. Guinea, AKA the guinea pig. AKA the guinea pig. <laughs> so can you... Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, well, uh, I've been involved with St. Ed's since, I believe it was 2005, when my uh, daughter went uh, to preschool, uh, four-year-old preschool, and um, had lived in the neighborhood before that, but had never uh, come here to Mass. And then, like so many people, uh, we got our foot in the door with school, and then that just opened up uh, a lot of relationships and connections, and over time, you know, you end up you end up meeting people that uh, who just aren't in your kid's grade, and um, and uh, yeah, so it's been a it's been 15 years, and it's it's been great. Wouldn't trade it for anything. And are you from Chicago originally? No, I'm from Ohio, and uh, I I had a little idea, um, and you could always put this on the uh, editing room floor. <laughs> but uh, one of the things I've been doing the last couple of weeks is cleaning and going through stuff and boxes and everything. And um, I just had my 50th birthday. So uh, my mom, she had brought up a lot. How of recent things. was the birthday? Uh, into February. Okay, nice. Well, happy birthday. Ba ba back when things were normal. And um, <laughs> so uh, my mom brought up, you know, pictures that she had gotten out of the garage that had just been in shoe boxes. So I was going, I thought I could give you a super quick pictorial biography of myself. I would love to see that. That sounds All right. wonderful. Well, I, I don't know. I think that's two months old. All right. So yeah, I look like a baby, but, you know, not a surprise. Um, so I'm from a small town called Xenia, Ohio, which is outside of Dayton. And a lot of people older than you um, will have heard of it because we had a tornado that hit when I was four. So this is actually me and my brother, Seth, um, standing in front of what used to be our house. Um, but we were, we were not home, so, and we were fine. And uh, um, some of the wonderful fashions of the 70s, again, I, I have four brothers. This is the one that's a year younger than me. Um, so I don't know if you could make out those uh, clip-on ties and those silky shirts. And then... Um, Oh, I don't want to show that one. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is me and my, this is the day, this is the day my family, we bought a Astro conversion van. I think I was a junior in high school. So you could see me there, cool guy. And uh, my, my brothers have those groovy 80s uh, soccer mullets. And um, yeah, the, the, the car salesman looks like a car salesman. No offense. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I played soccer in high school, so there again is me and my brother Seth um, after a high school soccer game. And I was at soccer camp, uh, Indiana soccer camp, between before my summer uh, senior year, and I talked to the coach at DePaul. So I ended up visiting and then uh, coming to DePaul, and I played soccer uh, here for a year. Uh, and then I uh, tuition went up, so I had to just quit and get a job. And but I eventually graduated with an education degree. And then I found this picture, which I thought was pretty funny. I'm pretty sure I was 10, uh, 1981, so I'm 11 here. Um, that's at our local park in Xenia, Ohio. 
And what are you doing? Are you fishing there? Or? No, that's a, uh, it's like a little remote control sailboat. So okay. That was, uh, I didn't know it, but that was my intro into, oh, I got a awesome 80s uh, bowl cut there. Um, that was my intro into uh, boating. So after, after, while at DePaul, actually, um, I got a summer job at Shoreline Sightseeing as a deckhand. And I did that for two summers. And then I got my captain's license and I, I got an education in history, history degree. And my plan was to become a history teacher and then drive boats in the summer. But the company was growing and there was a management opportunity. So I never ended up teaching and just uh, 30 years later. So this is my 30th season, which um, once the pandemic is over, hopefully we'll be out there doing boat rides again. Now, I've so I've had the pleasure, actually, of giving boat tours at Shoreline because of Stace my first summer after my first year of priesthood. And so I've seen firsthand you are teaching. Yes, yes you are. Yes, you, you, are, are. you are teaching uh, people how to not just sell tickets, but um, how to run and, and operate quite, quite the industry there. It is. And, um, you know, teachers are uh, phenomenal and that they make the world better. But I always tell our new employees, you know, you're, you're interacting with hundreds and thousands of people. And every uh, chance that you have to come across somebody is the chance to make somebody's day better and, and to make the world a little bit better place one small step at a time. Absolutely. So uh, speaking of the pandemic and your industry I, I mean obviously it's going to be bad but how bad will our the tourism industry in chicago be hit by what's now going to be a month and a half if not longer yeah yeah quarantine um, and lockdown yeah those you know the unknown unknowns i guess yeah. is what you would call these right um you know I, I think once people can get out and we saw that this week with the shutting down of the lakefront right i mean People are going to be people are chomping at the bit in a normal mm -hmm. spring to get out and enjoy life. And I think I'm about ready to climb the walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I agree. And so I think, you know, I think it will rebound quickly. And, you know, the the, the great part is the city never changes the city. You know, the, the buildings and the lakefront and the river, all that's going to be there. It's all primed and ready to go as are we and it'll just be a question of pulling the trigger. Um, you know, the saving grace for us, I guess, as an industry is, you know, March is a tenuous month at best in the boat ride world anyway. Um, obviously, we would like this to wrap up before we start getting into, you know, the meat of the season for, for everyone's sake. Right, yeah. But yeah, um, like, like, like every industry, you know, layoffs and nobody's working because there's no revenue, so. Yeah. Man, well, it's hopefully, and I think, especially with like the tours and stuff, both the boats, the the buses, and all that. I think that's stuff that locals also take advantage of. So even if people aren't traveling quite as soon as we'd like, I think um, Chicagoans will just be ready to get out, even go downtown and take well, a boat ride along the river too. You know? so, right, and 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 I've mentioned uh, this to you, and and. Um, email conversations that we've had since this started uh, mm -hmm. about church and, you know, mm -hmm. scarcity creates demand. And I think um, I know personally, like not being allowed to go to church and uh, having that stuff denied you does is a perspective check and it does make us appreciate what's right in front of our face. Um, and, you know, I, I could see, too, maybe where a lot of families might have taken a vacation to Florida or somewhere. Uh, this year, they're going to be, you know, due to finances or whatever, maybe, maybe they'll do a staycation and do all those things that are sort of right under our noses that we don't think about necessarily. Yeah. Well, that's a nice segue into the faith question. So tell us about your, your faith life. Uh, you're, you're at Mass every weekend. You're very involved here at the parish. You're involved, Dad, when both your kids were in school here. Um, so what role is, has the church played in, in your life? Have you always been Catholic? Have you always been practicing? What's kept you engaged in a life of faith? We were raised Catholic. Um, we, we went to Mass a large percentage of the time, not, not every single week, um, but it was a very important part for our family. And 
it, it wasn't always specifically stated, but uh, it was obvious to, to us kids. For I rem I, my dad was a salesman, so he had a, um, I remember that he would have a rosary with him. And when he was driving around on all his sales calls, he would, he would pray. And, and you know, it, that wasn't, and my mom always had the Bible by her bedside. And they weren't declarative in saying, this is what we're doing and we want you guys to do precisely this, but it was there for us to, to observe it. And, and it was a, a witness, if you will, um, to, to a faith life. As an adult, I, um, I would say that it, you know, like so many people uh, in their, uh, at that point in their life, their early adulthood, it, it just, it wasn't on the radar. And, and looking back, I don't know um, what that was, what factors led to that, if, you know, just consumed with work or other things. Um, but I would say that my, my personal prayer life or my, uh, certainly my petitions <laughs> to God were always there. Um, on a daily basis and just, you know, mentally praying the Our Father and the Hail Mary, you know, to myself. Um, and it, but it was, it was fairly elementary like that, but it, but it never went away. And, and mass attendance and then obviously uh, once uh, my kids were born, that does bring you back into the sacraments more and, and, and really once Olivia started going uh, to St. Ed's, for school and going to the weekly school masses and attending those, um, th that really was probably the best thing in terms of a reintroduction uh, that I could have had. And then um, 2012, uh, late 2011, early 2012, um, I had probably what I would just call a, a first um, conversion type experience uh, as an adult where it was um, without too many details it was just sort of a profound appreciation of everything that we have and just seeing it in a in a different light where you just realize the beauty and the elegance of and the simplicity and just sort of what a cornerstone it was um, so that was a spring for me that was a springboard just to then i think the the history uh major kicked in mm -hmm. and um i i really got into more of the historical aspects of the bible and uh things like that and and you know started watching father baron word on fire videos uh when he started producing those and all that stuff um just slowly led to more interest over time and then um you know being involved in church and then People, people like you who are enthused and excited about it uh, has made it easier. So, um, oh, great. Yeah. Awesome. So what are some of the things that you're uh, involved in here at the parish, here at St. Ed's? Well, uh, now that the kids have graduated, um, the, the school piece isn't there as a... Uh, used to be, but um, I've been attending your men's club since uh, we started awesome. that. Um, and then I think maybe for, I don't know, it's been maybe close to seven years now, I've been going to Theology and Cigar on the first. Which I think is a, a hidden treasure in our it, parish. It, I mean, it, the men's group serves a different purpose and that it's a little more fraternal based where Theology and Cigars is, is fraternal. Um, but it's a lot more discussion and kind of formation based. Um, yeah. I think it's a real gem in, in, in the parish uh, for it, the men. And, you know, you know really the, the, the group itself or the discussion itself is a mechanism to build those relationships. I, I think right. that's probably how I see it. And, right. and, and, and then we end up discovering stuff and questioning stuff. And, um, you know, so intellectually it's a good exercise, but... Um, and luckily, our, our new women's club that began, our women's group, uh, by Sarah Pellrein, uh, who I should probably interview next. I'm going to email her later today. Um, she might be my second guinea pig. Uh, but Sarah, in the women's group that meets on the first Monday of the month, when we're allowed to do that again, 
Um, they kind of do a very similar thing. They, they have prayer together. Uh, they've been focusing more on female saints, so they'll discuss, mm. uh, they'll read about and discuss a female saint, and then they end with wine and cheese and snacks and things. Um, and we have cigars and beer and sometimes a little brandy or whiskey, which is nice. Yeah. There you um, go. So I know you're involved in some other things. You, you volunteer and do stuff outside of the parish, particularly at the Well of Mercy. Can you share with Sh- sure. those watching about the Well of Mercy? Sure. Uh, yeah, the Well of Mercy is a great organization that I became involved with in the spring of 2012. I was listening to relevant radio and um, oddly enough, I had had a dream a couple weeks before that where I was involved in starting a, an orphanage <laughs> and it really? was, a, yeah. And it was a bizarre dream. Cause I'm like, where the heck did that come from? And, it, but it was very vivid and very real. And I'm like, Oh my God, am I supposed to quit my job and go start an orphanage? And you know, <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> um, and, uh, then two weeks later, I'm listening to the radio driving home, and there's a woman on there talking about this home that she started for pregnant moms who don't have anywhere to go and who have made the decision to keep their babies, and they're able to live at the Well of Mercy. So I, I filled out the volunteer application, and I went and knocked on the door, and showed up and said, uh, you know, I'd like to donate some money and I'd like to volunteer in whatever way I can. So, um, uh, and it's in the uh, old St. Timothy's rectory up on the north side. Uh, That's where they still are today, right? They're still there today. It's at Fairfield and uh, Devon is the approximate location. And um, so at any given time, there are 13 mothers there and uh, some of the rooms are double. So some of them have several kids. So it's about 30 to 35 people, and it's a, it's a spectacular program where um, the, the lives that have been changed and transformed and, and literally saved in many cases um, are incredible. A lot of them, um, have, of the residents, have ended up working for me over the summer. Um, multiple of them have gone on to become managers at Shoreline. Wow, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. I yeah. knew some of them worked at Shoreline, but I didn't know they got moved up in the ranks. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's a program that focuses on education, um, child care, learning how to be a good mother, spiritual development, and um, being able to take control of their life and, and eventually move on to where they are independent and not subject to being in abusive relationships and and those kinds of things that have often led them there in the first place. Um, What's unique is they're able to stay there for up to five years uh, while they go through college or a trades program. Um, And uh, so, yeah, it's been great. And I would, um, there's another parishioner who is uh, here who has recently retired and has become the once a week maintenance person slash do it all is he really I, yeah, mean, I know what you're talking about i didn't know he was there that often or doing that yeah kind of at least he's a handyman he's um he's Good helped yeah he's helped um the women build like a, a personal budgeting program so he's got them using budgeting software to you know because because they have jobs so they're able to you know save money and um so yeah he's he's doing uh saints work over there so what is uh, what does it cost the center per is it per uh, person is it per woman and their children? Uh, or? Yeah, we, we we figure the math per family um, for all their needs because you know you've got uh, food and uh, utilities and uh, transportation costs, um, tuition and those types of things. So basically, per per family it comes out to about eighteen thousand dollars per year, um, and uh, one of the greatest benefits there is that there is child care, so in-house daycare, so that so many of them, you know, when they come in, they have to make that decision. Do when this is the decision they're trying to make when they're trying to decide do they keep their baby? If if I have this child, daycare is going to cost X number of dollars you know, 50, 60, whatever percentage of my daily wages are going to go to daycare, then I don't have enough to pay the rent. So by having in-house daycare, 
they're able to go out, um, have a job, make money, save some of that money for when they're back, uh, able to, to move on. And then they're to, in terms of the responsibility piece, then they they are expected to, to pay into the community to help uh, do their part to support it once they are working. What are ways that we can support that mission? Um, so, I mean, obviously, I'm sure there's a way that we can donate to that because $18,000 at 15 potential families living in the house at any one time, that's that's a lot for a nonprofit to afford. It, it um, is. It is. And uh, as you know from fundraising <laughs> or, or anything, you know, yeah. um, it, it's a treadmill and, and those needs never go away. And, and really the cap on being able to do this, to provide this to more families is the, is the financial piece. So um, we do have a website, thewellofmercy.com, and we are on Give Central. So if anybody already has- Just like us. Just like us. So if you have your Give Central account, you could just add the Well of Mercy on there as one of your organizations and uh, donate it right through there or mail an old fashioned check. So I went with you and, and the kids once. We painted uh, in the hallways there. Yeah. Uh, was yep. that, like two or three years ago? I think it was like three years ago now. Uh, At least. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, probably, yeah, probably three years ago. Um, and I remember you showed me the like where the, the daycare part is, where all the toys are. And, yeah. Uh, volunteers, I think, had come in the week before and had cleaned a lot of the toys and helped to reorganize yeah. them. Well, uh, yeah. When I uh, – the first time Mary showed me around the place, I was like – Oh my God, this place is like running a battleship. You know? <laughs> it's got this galley that feeds all these people and laundry lined up, you know, for 40 feet. I mean, of course you would use like the ship analogy. Of course. <laughs> uh, and, but yeah, it, it's a major undertaking. And, you know, what um, I, I can provide for you some uh, links to, um, We've just put out a new video that uh, people from Loyola University did uh, for our 10 year anniversary. And then additionally, last year, my daughter Olivia for a school project did a video and um, for a documentary for class about the well. And that'd be great. She, yeah. And she was interviewing Mary in that. And, you know, one of the things that Mary says is, you know, it's. Um, it's not always the family that you're born into. It's the family that God provides you. Um, and, you know, and I, I think we all feel that about St. Ed's, right? We, we all feel providential in terms of our connection and, and, and what it means to us. Absolutely. We, we're just so blessed to have such a great uh, parish family. Um, and this, things like this only will help us to grow even stronger as we get to know each other and introduce introduce our parishioners to, to yeah. new people and not that you're not you're not new i mean you've been here a long yeah. time well um, I, i'm new i'm new compared to some some people who right fair enough we, yeah. we, we do have a a, tra a tradition community uh, yeah as a long-standing one so that's yeah. great um and besides uh giving to the well which is important especially now that I, a lot of your fundraisers like our fundraisers are being postponed um, how, are, how are ways people could volunteer there and help out? Um, yeah, one, once, you know, li again, life returns to normal. Um, there is uh, the daycare is provided like, you know, sort of like nine to five. But like the people that work for me end up working evening hours in the summer. So there's always a need for babysitters um, for the newborns. There's uh, baby cuddlers, which is really you just get a sit and hold babies, which, you know. How great is that? How cute is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, just do, doing things like maintenance, landscaping in the spring and fall. There's, you know, like a battleship, there's always work to be done and, and, and things that need to be uh, tidied and cleaned. And, 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 and really, um, tr truthfully, we're looking for people at every level from someone who just wants to give a few dollars to someone who wants to come occasionally and help out or uh, someone who would want to be a future board member who can bring some sort of expertise or skill set to the team that, that um, you know, because many hands make for light work. True. Well, that's awesome. Well, we'll share any of the, the videos and other links on our uh, social media. So anyone who 
uh, would like to donate to this great cause that helps these young women um, and their families or to volunteer. Uh, we'll share all that information uh, with the parish. And obviously our parishioners are already involved, not only with Stace, but other parishioners who are helping out on a regular basis at the well, at the Well of Mercy. Uh, so we'll share that, that information. Anything else, Stace? This, the, I think this has gone pretty well. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. We had a little it's, some technical difficulties in the beginning. Um, but any, anything else you want to share? Or no, I just... Any uh, words of hope for this pandemic? Uh, how are, what are, what are you doing to stay healthy and not climb the walls? Uh, I'm trying to get routine through like morning exercise and, you know, I, I think you've beat it into my head enough daily prayer. So I, I have someone's my, listening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I was just afraid. I didn't know what would happen if, if I continued to uh, uh, <laughs> not follow your direction. So I'm like, I better get with the program. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I told a buddy uh, the other day, I'm like, I think once the weather breaks, provided we don't go places we're not supposed to go. I think once people can get out and start walking around the neighborhood and maybe get on the bike trail up north and, and get out and, and just have a little bit of spring that, um, like you said, in terms of being able to do this video, um, there are silver linings out there. Um, if we look hard, um, it's hard when the paycheck stops coming in, but, uh, yeah, well, well, you know, and I was, you know, just like the picture of, uh, you know, my house from when I was a kid with the tornado, you know, I'm sure that was tough on my folks at the time, but you know what, you know, we got through it, right? We, we will get through it. Yeah. It's hard to see that resurrection now with the cross right in front of us, but the resurrection's yep. coming. Easter Sunday is coming. Yep. Yeah. That's what, that's what's at least giving me a bit of hope, even though it's my extroverted self is starting to get tested. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily we got the seminarians living with us and that they've been a big help. Um, I'm going to do a separate thing, kind of interviewing them and, and introducing them to the parish. So stay tuned for that video. That's coming up soon. Soon. All right. Well, why don't we close with a prayer? Already. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So loving God, we give you thanks and praise for this time together. We especially uh, give you thanks for the gift of Stace and all of our parishioners here who work so hard at serving you in our neighbors. Especially pray for the work of the Well of Mercy, that the good things that they're doing for young families to help these young women and, and their children, that that good work will continue through the generosity of others. And especially, Lord, we pray for an end, a quick end to this pandemic, that lives will be saved and people will be kept safe and healthy um, and that all will come to see the goodness that you give us every day in our lives. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Stace. Thank and, you very uh, much. Stay sane. So I'm, I'm trying. It's hard. I was <laughs> it's all relative. It's with. all relative. <laughs> I think I'm uh, very grateful for Stace and uh, for being our uh, guinea pig uh, for this first uh, session or episode of Meet the Parishioners. I uh, hope you can join us. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please do so now. Uh, just look up St. Edward Catholic Church on YouTube and subscribe. As soon as we get 1,000 subscribers, we can do mobile live streaming of our Masses and Holy Week liturgies um, coming up uh, just next week, actually. We're, only, we're already over 500, so we just need a little over 400 more subscribers. Share the link uh, with your uh, family, friends, neighbors. They don't have to be parishioners to subscribe, but as soon as we get 1,000, we can use this cool program via mobile devices uh, that'll help us bring clear picture quality um, uh, for all of our Holy Week liturgies in church. We also have a parish Instagram account. Feel free to uh, follow us on Instagram at STED Parish, St. Ed Parish. And as always, make sure you check out our website, uh, stedparish.org. Stay tuned for another episode of this coming up, uh, as well as some other fun videos that we're putting together uh, so that A, I stay sane. B, uh, we continue to build community, pray for each other, and uh, support one another. God bless you all. We'll see you again soon.